I've combined two questions together for this one because they're kind of about, well, not the same thing, but the same area. Um, so if the word's a little different to what you sent me, it's because I've combined two questions into one. So please explain what the thousand year reign of Christ is, where it takes place, and what our part as Christians is. Also, will non-Christians sin during it? I'll read the whole thing out. We're going to have to tackle this in two parts. Uh, also, the New Jerusalem. What does the Bible say about it? Where's its location? And at what point after the rapture do Christians dwell there? And now, I'm going to say right from the off, this is after Jesus returns. So we don't need to talk about the tribulation or the rapture in this one at all. <laughs> <laughs> so the second somebody goes tribulation or rapture out <laughs> does that apply to cliff as well <laughs> sorry um you're gonna aren't you what oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with the thousand year reign of christ now one of the questions is is where does it take place but i think it's also is where is it mentioned in scripture now we can hit on that very easily does someone want to start us off? I'll find it's in Revelation 20. Um, and we get a very clear order of things here. Shall I just read it out and then you can all comment on it? Uh, so, ideally in my Bible, this is headlined the thousand years. So if you're trying to find it, it's easy. <laughs> um, so this is after the wedding feast. This is after the return of Jesus. And we pick up on Revelation 20. By the way, Revelation 20 through to the end. By the way, I, dis I the disagree that it's after the wedding feast. The wedding so. feast happens. Oh, okay. Well, if, if anybody let's... wants to go back to that argument, we won't do it tonight. <laughs> anyway. But we do have some material on the website if you want to go back in. Anyway, Jesus has come back. Yes? Yes. Okay, yes. wonderful. Uh, Phew. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wish that was true right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hands the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, just in case there's any disagreement about who that is, and bound him for a thousand years and threw him into the pit and shut it and sealed it over him that he might not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be released for a little while. And then I saw thrones and seated on them were those who were, the authority to, to judge was committed. Uh, I am just going to pick up on a little bit of this. I'm going to skip down a touch. Uh, they came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So we have Christ reigning for a thousand years. We have the dead coming to life and reigning with Christ for a thousand years. Get this. The rest of the dead, these are the ones who haven't been raised. These are not the ones who are reigning and had not come to life until the thousand years were ended. That's the ones who are gonna face the great white throne judgment, which we'll get to. This is the first resurrection, um, and they will reign with Christ for a thousand years. Then we jump down to verse seven. And when the thousand years ended, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations that are at the four corners of the earth. We are gonna to touch on sin, but clearly there's a rebellion after the thousand years. To gather them for battle, their number is like the sand of the sea. So not only is the rebellion, big rebellion, and they marched up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, but fire came down from heaven and consumed them, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were. So the antichrist and the false prophet have already been thrown in there. They've been there for a thousand years and will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And then we get to the great white throne judgment. So we won't hit on the New Jerusalem yet. Let's just focus on the thousand year reign. So there's a very clear order there that Jesus has returned and this takes place. Does anyone want to speak into, into that? Everything changes when Jesus comes back again, when he returns, because the Bible makes it plain where, he, where he's returning to. He's returning to this earth He's returning to Jerusalem. His feet will stand upon the Mount of Olives. And everything will change when the Lord physically, bodily returns to this earth. Obviously, in his glorified body. You know, people talk about going to heaven. 
Well, the Bible makes it plain that heaven is not our final destination, where people go to now who die. Because we will reign. We, the, when the Lord returns, he's not coming back alone. He's coming with his saints. And when the Lord, re, when we, we come to this earth, the Bible says we will reign with him. So for a thousand years, our, if we are alive when Jesus comes, we will, our destination will be earth. Those who've died and are with Christ now, their destination will be on the earth. And that fits in with we shall not all sleep, but those who are alive at we'll the time changed, yeah. will be changed in the twinkling yeah. of an eye. So we, we will be, everything will change when Jesus comes back. Our destination will not be heaven, it will be earth. So for a thousand years, the Lord's going to reign on this earth. Mm -hmm. And we, the saints of God, will be reigning with him. Perhaps after a thousand years. Oh, we'll get Just to read, that. read on. <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment, because actually it's the next question, <laughs> the next part of the question. But yes, after the thousand, but at the end of the thousand years, does anyone pick up on the rebellion that happens at the end? Because the, the question is, is will non-Christian sin during it? I guess that's tied up with what happens at the end. Does anyone want to jump in it, on it, that it, bit? Only on the, very briefly, only on the idea that um, we raise with Christ. When we see him, we'll be like him. Uh, when we are raised, we have a glorified body and we are elevated with Christ. And, you know, Revelation speaks about ruling and, with Christ and, and being given thrones. Um, so I, I don't think there's probably any dispute between us no. on, on the nature of the millennium itself. And the events leading up to it have been fully aired over this last <laughs> year. Um, and people can have their conclusions on that. But I think... Um, I think it, it, it's clear that we will, we will see him, we'll be like him, we'll be raised, and um, it, it's going to be, we see through a glass darkly. We have hints, and we can't go beyond the limits of those hints. And so it becomes very difficult sometimes to say, I'm not going to create it a pattern of theology about this yeah. only to recognize that this is real and this exists and we, we can be confident that we will be there with Christ. Yeah. Have we got an amen to that one? Yeah. Well, some of you in here. <laughs> Just to add to um, what everyone said briefly, this isn't the only time in Revelation kind of sums it and gives it bit of a chronological order but throughout the Old Testament in Psalms, Isaiah, Romans, Ezekiel, there's promises made to Israel um, to f that God will fulfill that he hasn't fulfilled yet so and this thousand year reign is to bring all of that um, nations together because there's, there's there's mention in isaiah of you know 100 years will see if somebody dies after 100 years it seems young yeah but that clearly can't be here here yeah. and it clearly can't be the new jerusalem where death is no more yeah. this is in yeah. that this so time yeah period. the variety of prophecies which would be like you yeah. say quite a lot but the main purpose is to summarize it is to fulfill all of these prophecies just as Jesus' life fulfilled many prophecies in the Old Testament. There are many that are still not yet fulfilled, but which will be fulfilled at this time. So we can be confident that whichever way God sees to do it, he will do it. And it's to fulfill all those promises that God made through, uh, to Jesus, to the nations, to the whole earth, that the covenants of God will be um, fulfilled at this time and then he gives everyone a choice at the end of it again mm -hmm. yeah. he's that you know that's love isn't it that we always do have a choice one, one of the que I think this question was raised in our life group last week and it was uh, when we're talking about the judgments at the end mm -hmm. and the question was in the because this the, when Jesus comes back and reigns for a thousand years this earth will be totally different to what it is now in the sense the lion will lie down with the lamb, 
there'll be peace in the animal kingdom. Everything will be restored back to what it was in the Garden of Eden. And man will live under the perfect rule of Christ for a thousand years. The question was, would we sin in those years? We know that Satan is bound, and we know Satan does tempt us, but that is not our only uh, area of, of we, we, we have the world, the flesh, and the devil. And people will be still in their flesh. This is the, no, this is you in the thousand year reign yeah. we're talking about here. This Once is we change, we can't. Not us. Not us. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Yeah, not us. People who were still alive. I think when Cliff said us, he meant yeah. people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my apologies. So, yes. <laughs> will, will people still have the ability uh, to sin because they're still in a, a body of flesh yeah. and that, where that, we have all the problems? Yeah. But will one want to sin under the perfect rule of Christ? That's and you'd think no, but clearly at the end there's a rebellion and Satan deceives people. Well, Eden was perfect and they still managed it. Yeah, so, but the answer to the actual will non Christian sin during it, it doesn't say, but we know there'll be a rebellion at the end of it, so one would have, you can only make assumptions there, you couldn't, I don't think you could say definite. The, the fact that um, nations will come up to Jerusalem annually, yeah. and if nations don't come up, mm -hmm. uh, then there'll be some sort of judgment on them, like rain would help or whatever affecting their, their land yeah so it does say to me anyway that um is free will free will doesn't go anywhere that's right that's the thing and it's quite and impossible to a lot of there'll be a, the people born in that time there'll be unregenerate life and so unregenerate life is you know we're prone to sin but I, I, there's nothing definite i would like to move on to the next part which is the so what you're saying is there's no real answer Exactly. What I'm saying is, is the, the question of sin, Juno, the only clue you get there is that um, there's the rebellion at the end. So there has to be. So there has to be, otherwise there'd be no rebellion at the end. That's the answer. But will Satan won't tempt anyone to sin during that time because he's bound. But that doesn't stop people sinning, does it? Because let's be honest, it, we don't need much help when it comes to sin. <laughs> that means if there is to be sin, then it means there cannot be peace in the earth, I suppose, because people can still kill. Exactly. There is war at the end of this. Yeah. Having said that, we're about to step into the next chapter where there is yeah. Christ everlasting Christ rules with the rod peace. of iron. Yes. So it sounds like he needs to rule with the I'm rod of say, iron. Yeah. It's not kid gloves, it's a rod of iron. But then we get to the next chapter, and the next chapter is amazing. Revelation 21. Then I saw, so this is after the rebellion, Satan is then thrown, he's no longer bound, he's thrown into the pit where the Antichrist has been for a thousand years, and now we get a new heaven and a new earth, and this is Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. So yeah. is it a planet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then new heaven and a new earth, right? Yes, but new, new doesn't always mean... Let's say, I'm a new creation, yeah? When I was saved, I was a new creation. Yeah. Fair? Yeah. Same body. Renewed, something happens, yeah. something happens, and that's the same to the heavens and the earth, because it's the it's the it's the heaven comes down, heaven and earth unite at this point. Let me finish reading it. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man; he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God Himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more. For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And I will stop there. There's a description of the New Jerusalem later on about what it looks like. Um, re reading that another time. But So this, this is after. And then I saw heaven come down. 
new heaven and new earth and heaven and earth united. So this is the restoration of all things. This is, this is, we start in a garden, we end in a city. And this city is described as being, I mean, we're given some descriptions of it, but if we would talk about the size of it, <laughs> it is around about 1,500 miles that's, big. They used stadia as the measurement, which is said is the measurement uh, of man. Of the man so that's about 1,500 miles in our modern measurements, if you were to convert it. So we're talking about a city that is bigger than any city you could even conceive of right now. There's no city this yeah. big. From John Agrot down to Africa. Yeah, it's huge. And comes Ish. down to earth from heaven. And we have this, reun this uniting of things as they were always meant to be. Listen, we were created... I'm answering the question. I'm not. I'm going to hand over. Um, we were created physical beings. Yes. When God made Adam, He breathed into his body. Adam was always intended to be physical. When sin came in, that's when death came in. The ultimate restoration of all things is the salvation of the physical, where heaven and earth are reunited. No more death. No more sin. No more tears. The former things have passed away and we will have community with God, fellowship with God, fellowship with each other as it was designed to be before the fall. But we'll have that in the millennium. Not the same way because there's still death. In our glorified bodies well, we'll have that. Yes, but what we're talking about was the restoration not yeah. just of us mm. but of all Everything, all things. things. Yes. And this is the ultimate, this is where everything's heading towards, is the restoration of all things. Um, does somebody else want to jump in there? Because I feel like I'm doing I all the talking. I just like, um, just uh, Jerusalem, I always like to look up the meanings of the words, and Jerusalem basically means the place where God dwells. It's a place of peace, completeness, wholeness, a place of awe and service to God. And we... You know, we're trying to think of a spiritual thing with a physical mind, limited. And we can't because, we, you know, our minds get blown. So John has put it down as his best as he can. But really, if the New Jerusalem is a place where God dwells, whatever that looks like, I want to be there. Because like Luke said, it's oneness, it's completeness, it's wholeness, <coughs> it's unity. It's a place of peace. So that transition at the end, you know, whatever we will look like, whether, you know, like Jesus had the physical body that was able to, to transport, you know, whatever God is designed for us will happen, but we can't bend our minds too much about it. Let's just serve him and, and know that he has his, uh, our best intentions are, at the end of we're, it. We're trying to put words to things that no yeah. man has ever experienced. Exactly. Paul even said that, didn't he? That if, even if you get nothing else. Nothing else. Verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. We are talking about the dwelling place of God being with us. Now... We can, we, can, we can focus on the details of that, but I think that's, sometimes we, we, we can get so into the, how does that work with that, work with that. The dwelling place of God is with man. And I think one of the greatest verses in scripture, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Yeah. When it says a new heaven and a new earth, yes. um, I don't believe that that means the old heaven has been obliterated and the old earth has been obliterated That's and God's recreating again. I believe it means it's been restored. I mean, with us, he renews us. Yes. Um, if, if, for instance, it was all wiped out and, and God had to create a, a brand new physical planet, or whatever, Satan has partly won. Yeah. 
yes, you can because say, well, I, God, God has to start rubbish again. what what, what he had in the beginning. Exactly. God's God's he always been us. in the business of redemption That's and restoration. Yeah. And that happens in us, and ultimately that happens to yeah, His creation. I believe that. And that that's that's the victory that's the victory behold i am making all, all things, things new it's interesting when he so says it's uh, sorry the new jerusalem the new jerusalem coming down this is talking about the uniting of where god is now and where earth is now so heaven uh, heaven's not going to he, yeah heaven and earth aren't going to be separate they're going to be united. Yeah. Yes, as in the scroll is. But what you do with the scroll when you finish reading it is you roll it up and put it away. You don't destroy it. You roll it up. It's not about destruction. It's about renewal. Can I just say that I wouldn't worry too much no. about <laughs> the method, just the end result. Yeah. Because it, 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 you know, it's very, very difficult to unlock what's metaphor and what's absolutely literal true. And I think most of it absolutely is absolutely literal true. But it, it, there's no point in getting hung up over it other than to know the new heaven's coming down. God's going to dwell with us forever. Yeah. It's going to be great. That's, that's the point of all of it. Yeah. I, I believe verse 2 gives us some glimpse into because the new Jerusalem John said I saw it coming down from God out of heaven as a bride prepared for its husband remember what Jesus said he said in my father's house there are many mansions I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you will be also so my take on this is, whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, I believe I might be right. <laughs> I, I believe that the new Jerusalem is heaven as it is. God's not going to destroy this place that the Bible talks about in so many wonderful things. When he talked, you, you know, when, when Paul says, I saw things that I'm not even permitted to speak about. He was blown away. He wanted to get there. Yeah. He said, for me to live is cr to Christ, but to die yeah. is gain. He, he'd got a glimpse when he was stoned at Lystra, he got a glimpse of the eternal, yeah. and it changed his life. Exactly. Is God going to destroy that? I believe the new Jerusalem is heaven as it is now, where people who have died in Christ are now. One day, heaven will come down. And as it is now and joined to earth yeah, yeah. As, it, as it is as, now as it, it doesn't now. say it touches the earth it says i just saw it coming down it doesn't say it doesn't either no either it way. doesn't <laughs> but, but it will be it, so heaven will be on earth well i mean we're all saying the same yeah. thing is that there's this uniting of heaven and earth yeah. and i think it is so easy to get caught up with the detail of this and miss the you know we're talking about everything being as it should be yeah i was going to say that the verse that cliff said there it's as a bride adorned for a yeah. husband and we are the bride of christ yeah and he says clearly it's the the dwelling place of god with man yeah so like we've all said the detail <laughs> is irrelevant the yeah. bride of christ is the new jerusalem is made up of us yeah and that you know because sometimes you can think, well, what is heaven going to be like for eternity? This disembodied existence. Heaven isn't like that for eternity. Heaven, ultimately, it's the restored physical, and it's 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 the restored humanity. What the enemy has stolen, God is going to restore. Yeah. And that's the key to all of that. 